Merry Christmas! Hi guys! This is Risa Light. So Christmas is around the corner, but did you already finish your Christmas shopping? Today, I would like to introduce you to some of my favorite anime Christmas themed episodes. Like some of them were cute and happy, while others were sad or intense. But this time, my review includes so much spoilers. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Beep, beep, beep. Make sure to check the list in the description box below and jump to the re review link that you're interested. Alright? So let's go! Kimi ni todake episode 22 a Christmas! Sawako's class is having a Christmas party, and she gets really excited to spend her first Christmas with her classmates and Kazehaya. However, she agrees to spend her Christmas with her parents since it was her family tradition. So she decides to stay home instead of the party. But soon after, uh, her parents notice her anxiety, they let her go see her friends. Everyone else has already left, but only Kazehaya was waiting for her in the snow, and they exchange a Christmas present. Sawako is so, so sweet. Her dad must be proud to have such an amazing daughter like her. Like, to be honest, it kind of frustrated me a little bit because I was like, Sawako, why did you tell your parents that you want to go to the party? But at the end, it turned out great and Sawako had a nice time, so I guess it was okay. Because, you know, at the end, Sawako could go see her prince, Kazehaya Gun, on Christmas night and they could exchange the Christmas present and stuff. Oh, and, 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 and. Sawako just got her first cell phone from her dad as a Christmas present. So of course the first contact info that she got was Kazehayaku. Oh my, like it was so cute. So cute, so sweet, and Sawako is so cute. And it made me cry. It was such a cute, heartwarming episode. Osomatsan, episode 11, Christmas Osomatsan. Oh man, Osomatsan. I don't even know where to start, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I guess it's Shogunai because it's Osomatsu. Like, I wish I could summarize this episode like I did with Kimi Nitologia, but I just cannot summarize this episode. Like, there were several short episodes about Christmas, it was just a pure chaos. So, first, it starts with Osomatsu brothers as zombies because they got no plans on Christmas, so their mentality got rotten or something. Like, see, I don't even know if I'm making any sense right now. And this is only the first minutes of this show, too. So, besides the zombie, there was Black Santa by Ichimatsu bothering a couple on the date, and the perfect Christmas with the main characters back in the Bishonen, Bishojo form, like the first episode, and ending up uh, destroying all the love hotels in the city while flying in the sky. <laughs> and love. Where the young and the Kapan spent a super cute friendship Christmas party, but at the end ended up going to the sex club and many many more. So overall, it was a pure chaos. And all I was thinking during this show was like, but I guess it's Shogunai because it's Osomatsu. It was so Osomatsu. Urusei Yatsura, episode 10, Peter Potter Christmas Eve. This is a classic. So this episode came out in 1981. Like, I wasn't even born back then. But even though it's, a, it's an oldie, you can watch great anime over the generations. Urusei Yatsuda is Rumiko Takahashi's debut series, and the main character, Lam, is still so popular all over the world, even today. I would say this is one of my favorite Urusei Yatsuda episode. So Ataru's classmate Megane set up a trap to embarrass Ataru so that Lam would be disappointed in him and leave him. So they set up a date who will make fool of Ataru, but Lam overhears this plan and she shows up pretending to be his date, and they walk back home together holding hands in the falling Christmas snow. So it was the first time for Ataru to show his affection towards Lam on the TV series and it was so cute. So Ataru realizes love's unconditional love, dedication, and beauty even for a little bit. And he had a hand of Lam who's trying to fly back home by herself and ask her to walk together. Ah, oh, that love smile. So cute. Lam-chan wa chou kawaii da chan. The Idol Master, episode 22 on the Holy Night. 
Now, the idols at Namco Productions are so popular that they have been working non-stop. Meanwhile, Haruka wants to hold a Christmas Eve party with everyone, but it seems like most of them cannot attend. But thanks to the producer, everyone could make it and they get to celebrate Christmas and also Yukiho's birthday together. So far, it sounds like a super cute happy Christmas episode, right? I mean, I cried over how cute it was, but this episode was pretty important to lead to Haruka's... Haruka! Haruka's main story starting next episode, which is episode 23. So like now, it shows how occupied these girls are now with their own individual jobs, and also how lonely and anxious Haruka started feeling. But overall, it was really cute. Especially, um, like, the ending's artwork was like so lovely with all the Namco idols in Santa's costumes. But I, it's maybe it's just me, but I just cannot help feel, but feel a little bit bittersweet because of Haruka. Tora Tora episode 19, Christmas Eve party. Christmas episode. Like, if you have watched this, you feel my pain, right? Okay, you're not alone. Okay, let's scream together then. Three, two, one. Aha, Dora Dora! Dora Dora is one of my all time favorite anime, so when I thought about Christmas episodes, the first thing I thought was like, Dora Dora! Taiga tried so hard to play matchmaker between Ryuji and Minori. She puts lots of effort into this school's Christmas party, and she even performs a song with Ami. But she leaves the party right after her performance to go convince Minori to come to the party for Ryuji. Soon after, Ryuji follows Taiga and he visits her house as Santa Claus, with bare Santa Claus, to help her realize that she's not alone. Afterwards, Taiga pays Ryuji to go back to the party for Minori, uh, which he did. And after Ryuji leaves, Taiga begins crying uncontrollably and like screaming his name, like calling his name, collapsing on the street. And Minori, who was on her way to go to the party, accidentally witnessed this. So when Minori sees Ryuji at school, she indirectly tells him that she doesn't want a boyfriend and he realizes that he gets rejected before he confesses. Okay, I'm not crying. You're crying. No, we are crying. Okay, this kind of got long because so many drama keeps happening in this episode. It, it is like super Christmassy. It's such a Christmas episode, but it's just like so hard and like so painful towards this episode. Like, especially when Taiga rushed to the outside, like, calling Ryuji's name, like, totally cute me. I'm like, even now, just, like, remembering that scene, like, is, like, only enough to make me cry. But, like, I don't want to cry in front of camera, so I'm, like, trying so hard. <sighs> in this episode, Taiga shows her feelings towards Ryuji so clearly for the first time. I mean, this episode is kind of sad and depressing. But since it's almost like ending, maybe you can just like mask up the rest of Tora Tora on your Christmas night because it's just so nice. So these were my favorite anime Christmas themed episodes, but what did you guys think? So every year, seriously, I always stay home watching anime by myself, like every year, seriously. But maybe this year I can just watch only, you know, the Christmas themed episodes on Christmas Day. Okay, no. I'm not crying. You're not crying. Don't make me cry. It's okay. I have Kaju with me on Christmas. And also these beautiful 2D girls or Love Life girls. And Mystic Messenger Special Christmas Rods. So again, it was me with the like. Thank you so so much for watching this video. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas. So happy holidays and happy new year. So I will see you guys next year in 2017. やばい。2017年だって早。じゃあまた来年会いましょう。それでは良いお年を。またね。バイバイ。<笑>